All right. right, come join Kyle, John and David as they go through what's on the playlist. Find out what's everyone's favourite at Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment. We have a few segments to be honest. In and out points, no celebs and the gossip. Back in time where we talk about the big M's coming attractions, what the queue, quick checks, who'll be laughing, you abundantly. Welcome to Jewel Redundancy. Yes, welcome to Do Redundancy, the only podcast we can hear all latest in television, entertainment, and summer box office draft results from too many else with exactly the same, well, everything. Uh, box office predictions, <laughs> quick checks, everything going on tonight. I'm one of those hosts, David Allen, and another one is... Yeah, Berg, and the third one is... Kyle Bridger. I would say that I am the Deadpool to John's Wolverine... Dave, you're you're our penguin. I don't have a movie yet. I'm only a TV show. What what, what is this? Yep, yep. You're just uh, a side character in this whole experiment. Yeah, but I'm I'm on HBO. I'm on HBO, and I mean, I think. Are you? Or are you on Max? What are I, you? Don't even know what you are. I don't know what I am, but I mean, looking at some of these movies, I don't know if they're even a. Is is that Chicken Soup for the Soul Entertainment still going on? No, I don't think so. I mean. <laughs> We'll, we'll break down these draft results because, yeah, there have been some big winners and there's some big losers uh, tonight. And, yeah, so we got that. We got quick checks. No in and out points tonight. It's a jam-packed show. Let's get right to it. And the main thing we're talking about tonight is the summer box office draft results. Uh, we did the draft um, back in April, episode 444. It's our seventh annual draft. And each host gets to pick three movies that open wide between May 1st and the first day of fall, September 22nd. And the domestic totals will be added up through that day. So domestic is very is very key there. Not international, not worldwide. Domestic totals. It's our seventh draft, which means we've done six before. And coincidentally, we all have two wins each. Wow. This, this is going to be the... Some one of us is gonna get a uh, a third win, a, a hat trick here. Random.org picked the order of the snake draft, which went John, David, Kyle. Mm-hmm. And let's review the picks here because it's it's been a minute. We'll see where everyone is and you know what, what's going on. So John, of course, started off. He went Deadpool and Wolverine number one. Then he had picks six and seven. Number mm. six was A Quiet Place Day One. <laughs> and number seven, Borderlands. I think I think yeah. those two sunk chicken noodle. Uh, uh, we'll get there, John. We'll get, there. Uh. we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Very shortly, because it's the first one we're going to be talking about. I was number two. I went with Despicable Me 4. And then I had picks five and eight. And number five was the Garfield movie. And number eight, Twisters. All right, mm. and, then, and then Kyle, you're, you went third in the draft. So you, you get picks mm-hmm. three and four, and then you close it with nine. Uh, mm-hmm. For your third pick, or for your first pick, the third overall, you went with Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Mm-hmm. Followed it right up with Inside Out 2. And then you ended the draft with Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, number nine. So mm. as we discuss these films... We will also look at the like you know entire top ten of the summer. Maybe share some mini reviews of what we weren't able to cover you know this summer. Um, discuss some of these summer box office bombs and and stuff like that. It's a little bit of a summer movie recap show as well tonight. Speaking of bombs, let's start with the bottom <laughs> and work our way up. And, and we we can't start at at the top ten. We have to actually go to. The, oh. the top 27? Oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Sorry, it's John. Of Borderlands. All over again. <laughs> Borderlands, your last pick, seventh overall in the draft. Coming in with a total. This is not the opening weekend. This is the total 15 million domestic. Oh, my God. What do they spend on this? Like 50 million? Not something? 15 million. I'll tell you no. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. What happened? I don't know. You think after like The Last of Us and all that, the video game, movie, and video Five adaptations. Five Nights at Freddy's did really well yep. recently. You'd think it was on the rise, and then all of a sudden, mm, 
Nope. <laughs> not even not even a positive uh earnings on the they're not breaking even on that one. Um yeah. I I when I heard this movie, right? I didn't see there was no trailer yet. There was nothing for this. I just heard the cast and I liked the idea of, you know, this video game being created. And then I saw the trailer and I thought, oh God, because it looked bad. It looked really bad. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's been a lot of stuff like written about it where it's like multiple screenwriters, the director was working on it, then left the project and, you know, someone else came in. It's like, it's, it feels very much of a hodgepodge of a movie. Mm. And yeah, it was that, you know, the August dead zone. But, you know, sometimes there's something that there's a sweet surprise, like Guardians of the Galaxy. The first one was in August, started a franchise. So it's like, you know, they still will sometimes click. And you you mentioned the cast. It's like yeah. almost it seems like maybe we should have been like, oh, this is like too weird of a cast. Like, are these people going to gel where it's like Kate Blanchett, mm. Kevin Hart, Jack Black, Jamie Lee Curtis? It's like what's going on here this is like a weird mishmash of talent and people it's almost like a mad lib you know or ai wrote this of the cast and but but that's what borderlands is yeah. borderlands is wacky and crazy and people love it and it it not not this 10 yeah. percent <laughs> on rotten tomatoes oh, mm. uh, so Boy. yeah i think it's just i think it's the creative stuff behind the scenes just really failed this movie um it maybe could have connected it could have been a fun summer flick yeah like a guardians but you know when it's it's not there you know during production you can't save it in post <laughs> like yeah. so um but yeah it was under some other true bombs of the summer if you look at the list it's like herald in the purple crayon horizon yeah. um, an american saga chapter one which was so bad they pulled part two from the theaters it was supposed to air both this <laughs> summer they they didn't do that they're they're holding it for you know a little bit maybe to get a bigger audience but then i even saw like the 15th anniversary of Coraline made <laughs> double in half the theaters and wow. came out a week later than <laughs> like, <sighs> that's crazy yikes yikes um it's okay john because at least this was your last pick and not your first pick like if you went like your first oh, no. pick and that was like oh I would, this that low really dead that was what it was for kyle though number 14 on the list furiosa <laughs> a mad max saga oh. kyle's first pick the overall third pick in the draft number 14 on the box office list but it's still 67 five times. million <laughs> yeah. it's still five times the amount of money mine made hang on a second you can't say that it's stank but it's he's got six x my earnings already <laughs> i did have to like make a break in the the, the thing here because i'm like oh I'll do a top 15 but like oh i got a 16 through 26 and then do a 27 for john but all right you know i you know what to be fair with furiosa i feel like it might have not done well at the box office, but I feel like the reception behind it, a lot of people enjoyed this movie. And I don't know what it was, but... Do you saw it, right? Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Have you yeah, seen it? Yeah, how I was it? it? I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I think I like the first one a bit better in this, whatever the saga is, but uh, this one was still enjoyable. Uh, yeah, I liked it. Uh, but I, I, I didn't go to the theaters to see it. I waited until it came, you yeah. know, home so I could see it here. Uh, maybe that's what people, I think people in general are just starting to do that with movies that they're unsure about. Although yeah. one would say this would be a movie that you'd probably want to go see in the theater with the, yeah the, the sound and the, the action and everything that goes along with it. But, um, I still enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'll admit, it was originally uh, on my original list I had. I looked it up. It was number five on my draft mm -hmm. board. Um, I was expecting it to make at least $150 million mm -hmm. and only made 67 And I just don't know because, like, yeah, the the last film in the franchise uh, in 2015 made 154 domestic mm -hmm. and it was well-received. And I thought, okay, maybe people really want to see the you know next one. And 
it's on the big screen like I'll, I'll take my chance now and not miss it but it, i don't know maybe it's like is it the prequel aspect of it because anya taylor joy is doing charlie's thrones character right mm. so it's like oh what you loved about the first one but that cast isn't there it's different people playing like it's yeah so i don't know if that like soured people a little bit or you know the the weekend I, is weird because it's like okay got mm-hmm. it's memorial day weekend and maybe that also hurt the next film we'll talk about in a little bit but you know you have some clunkers this weekend pirates 4 solo x-men apocalypse but at the same time you also had top gun maverick recently mm-hmm. you know so it's like it, it it doesn't mean memorial you know day is bad but like it did end up being the lowest Memorial Day opening weekend in decades this year. This film, the film we're talking about soon, other films just in general, the worst in decades. So I don't know mm. if it's just it, the whole summer movie season took a while to get going, get started here. Or yeah, maybe as you're saying, Kyle, people are like, yeah, I'm good. I'll, I'll wait till it's, I'll wait till it's, uh, you know, in my home. Yeah, I, I mean... Personally, I don't look at Memorial Day weekend as like a movie weekend. I mm. picture it like a barbecue, yeah, go yeah. hang out. Oh, yeah. It's the first weekend of the summer. I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to do, go do something outside. So uh, unless there's like a movie that I really, really, really need to see, um, and maybe Top Gun Maverick was one of those for me, but um, I don't think I was going to be all gung-ho to to see Furiosa. I don't think I was ever going to see it in theaters. Um, um, I will say something else I was worried about with this movie what, from the trailer was Chris Hemsworth. But I, after seeing it, I think he did, did do a good job. But we were worried about the, you know, the, what was it? What was the movie that he's in, the... Was it Guardians of the Galaxy? Or I mean, the, yeah, he wasn't the, in that franchise. The, uh, I don't know. He's like doing his little shtick there. That yeah. It was just like, ah, oh, this feels a little put on too much. But it, it worked. It worked for the character, and I think he did a, a good job with it. Okay. Well, that was Furiosa. So far, you got one film for you guys in this in the bottom part here, but nothing for me. Until now. Number 11 on the list. The Garfield movie. I made my first appearance on this list here. 91 million domestic. I just missed out on the top 10 by just a million. Just a million. I could have been all three of my, in the top 10. This was um, initially, yeah, this was number four on my list. Um, and it was really tricky, I feel like, to predict this one because I had like no real like actual comp. It was a start of a new animated franchise. And like, you know, if I, I, I did everything, I was, I was scraping the barrel for, you know, competition, you know, what could I compare this to Chris Pratt? Okay. What was his, like, you know, his voice work, he's done a bunch of different voices last year, Mario 574 million, the original this Lego was movie, never going to do 257 million. It didn't need to do 574 for me Do half that. Yeah. Do, no, do, dude. Uh, do a quarter of that. Mm. No. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't it hear did a tenth any, of that. Like that's yeah, what I'm saying. I didn't saying. hear anything about this movie at all. But you gotta remember, like holiday weekend. This is kids, kids, family, money. Like that's those things go together. It's like how much <laughs> crap comes out, and it's like oh, like I mean, John, did you ever even see in the Mario movie? How many times did we pick on that trailer? Oh, Mushroom Kingdom, it. here we come. Yeah, I did was see it, it good? Yeah, I wouldn't see it. It made five hundred seventy-four million. Like yep. that's the thing. Like I'm just, I'm just picturing you pitching this movie and go, kids, family, money, sell it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you look at the franchises, man. We'll, yeah, no, we'll talk know. about one in a little bit, making a lot of money. But that's all I'm saying. It's like, you know, you look at animated cat movies. You know, Puss in Boots, one hundred eighty-six million. I, I knew it wasn't going to get the five seventy-four. I was hoping for 200. I was hoping for 150. I was hoping for 100. You know, sure, this is missed out on 100 by, you know, 9 million, but like I wanted triple digits and I thought with the with the voice talent, what? the animated thing of behind it, like you have to admit like 
when you're picking movies, you go animated. I mean, yeah. we've seen it so many times in these drafts. It's like that's yeah. usually a good sign. Mm. My thing is like what I think I was mentioning this when we were drafting is like what is keeping Garfield alive? Is it theme parks? Is it because it's not the yeah. comic, but like Nostalgia. is there a TV show? Nostalgia. Yeah. But, but like we see you see the trailer and it's like, you know, a little <laughs> cute little cat. This yeah. thing plays to kids. I mean, we had those Secret Life of Pets movies. They were in the top, you know, three movies in these past drafts. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, animated, you know, pets, kids. It's like all these things. Like I had all the stuff on the whiteboard, but yeah, just again, those first like four weeks at the box office in May just did not connect. Mm. We'll talk about other films in a bit, you know, Fall Guy, Furiosa, Garfield movie, like all these films, like they didn't move. Like, mm-hmm. and it's just like, it's, I think, you know, maybe if it came a little bit later, a little earlier, something, it just wasn't the right time. Mm. Um, because in, later on, two other animated films cleaned up at the box office. Um, but We'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, you know, I, I'm disappointed in this. I wasn't expecting, you know, that 574. I was not. I was at least hoping 100, 150, somewhere in there. But, well, I got 91. Yeah. Just missed no the top bueno. 10. Just missed the top 10. Um, let's look at the next little bit here. Cause yeah, we didn't, we didn't get eight, nine, and 10. Uh, it ends with us, number eight on the list. If Which one is that? It ends with us. What's, that, what is that is um, the, is that it's that a Colleen rom-com Hoover? with um, uh, what's it? Blake Lively. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's based on that. I think Colleen yeah. Hoover book, right? But, yeah. Okay. But if uh, there you go, number nine on the list, and ten, the Fall Guy. You know, just a million more than the Garfield movie here. Any thoughts on these? I know uh, Fall so, Guy. Yeah. I think you saw that one, Kyle. Yeah, I watched it um, when it came out on Peacock. I actually really enjoyed this. Uh, I don't think I would have ever seen this movie in the theaters. I think it's unfair uh, that it was being hyped up as like a summer blockbuster anyways. <laughs> yeah. They put it um, in that Marvel 1st yeah. of May slot. They're like, this is the start. And I think that's what hurt it because it's like, People didn't think the summer movie season started yet, and that's why I think it took a while to get going. Whereas, yeah. like, whatever it was, sometime in June when those movies started clicking, it's like, oh, summer movies are here. It's like you, you yeah. forgot about this last month of them. I I just think it's I think it's unfair to like put it up in that blockbuster category, but uh, I think it's an easy watch. Um, you know, it, it's entertaining. Ryan Gosling's entertaining. Um, it's comedic. There's some good action sequences in it. Um, it's kind of silly at points. I think it had all these elements working for it, but I don't, I don't think of it as a blockbuster movie. I just, I think it's a solid, solid movie that maybe got marketed wrong. I don't, I don't know why it was marketed the way it was, but I think it's a solid movie. That's like fun to watch. I, I think, I think of this is like a, a cable movie that you could just tap into whenever. Yeah, T- and and TNT you're getting, on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And you're getting something out of it. So, um, I, I yeah. think it's a little bit of their own fault though, because of, you know, this is a theme that I think you can almost say that about all the movies we're going to be talking about today, but like specifically something like this. This is one of many films this summer to be released on digital two weeks after the yeah. theatrical release. Mm-hmm. What are we doing? You guys are training the public to be like, you know, you don't see it that first weekend. Okay, you get it. And then like the second weekend, oh, like I meant to see it. Oh, I'll see it the next week. Oh, it's going to be at home for 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. I can bring the whole family and watch it in my living room for 20 bucks. Yeah, I'll do that. Like, you can't do this. Just let the film stay in theaters for a bit. Or, you know, it's in theaters. Maybe it bombs in theaters. Well, you make them wait three or four months, and then it goes to a streaming service and stuff. Like, Mm. you have to give them incentive to watch it that first weekend or two or three. But if there's no incentive to do it in those two weekends, well, they're not going to keep showing up. And I think that's where it's happening here. And you see it with this. It's, 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 I, I, I can't figure out what they are doing. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. 
but they uh, know they mean, know what's working. Is Peacock I mean, showing maybe, up the cash? <laughs> that know. or I think it's like it's underperforming, so then they're gonna try but, but and yeah, make it's like up underperforming the difference because of it's like this yeah. like weird cycle. Yeah, and it's like oh, you're gonna make up the difference, but it's like or like we'll talk about another film in a little bit, but it's like they're releasing it. On its like third weekend. Oh, it's still making 15, 20 million in, at the box office. Yeah, that's that's silly. It's like, it's mm. still not, it's like it was in the top. This is not the Fall Guy, another film we'll talk about. It was still in the top three of the weekend. Yeah. Don't put it on VOD. You wait till it's out of the top 10, out of the top 20. Mm. It, it's just like, but again, they know what they're doing. I don't. So, um, <laughs> all right. All right, here. All right. Uh, let's see. One of us is gonna have a, a, a second film make an appearance. Who's it gonna be? It's gonna be John with a Quiet Place Day One. Mm. One hundred thirty-eight million dollars for a Quiet Place Day One. Uh, thoughts on this one, John? That's kind of about what I was hoping for. It's a solid hundred, hundred and a half, just to kind of mm. you know push things along. And you know, I kind of expected some of the stuff to not do so well. Not not Borderlands, but you know. I, I was looking for something that would hold hold status quo, I guess, and it kind of did, but um, I didn't end up seeing it to be honest. So <laughs> I, I don't can have I, a review. I, 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 say, I see, I saw it at home, but we can talk about it a little bit. Okay. That just looking at that poster, that poster is terrible. Yeah, it looks so bad. This one's bad, but you should see the other one that they released like online. I think this is like what I mean. Their so cast isn't better. in it, but it's so cool. Like, yeah, for those uh, listening uh, in the podcast feeds. It is literally the New York City skyline with the reflection in the water. So it looks like a sound wave, but at the very end of it, the sound stops. And mm-hmm. yeah, witness the day the world went silent. It's it's such a unique, cool poster. And it's just like, now let's do the, the cheesy one where like things are falling and you know, it's like whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a cool poster. Um Yeah, this was a tricky one, but I had around the same amount, John, thinking it was gonna make. It was number six on my list, and it's like I thought, okay, maybe it'll hit like 150. Like that's because mm-hmm. if you look at the franchise as a whole, like 2018, first one made 188 million. 2021, this was the first one like coming back from the pandemic. So a little bit of an asterisk, 160 million. So it's like this film can never, or this franchise hasn't hit 200 million yet. So it's like this, will this prequel without John and Emily even hit 150? So that's where mm-hmm. I was like, eh, it'll probably be right around there. And it ended up, you know, being 138. Yeah. So I'm not disappointed in that. Um, yeah. It's about where I expected it to be. So, yeah. And I did see it at home and I think it's fine. And maybe like it's because I saw it at home and maybe like I know the first two when I saw them in theaters, it is like very much a theater experience with mm. the sound and everything in the people. Mm-hmm. But like it felt almost like a very kind of TV streaming movie mm. and, mm. you know, and, you know, it's exactly what you thought. And it's like, I think with all these it's day one kind of like yeah, you see the initial thing just like you did in like i think in the second movie but like then i feel like it's then it's like day like four or five like i yeah. don't know like it's like same with like fear of the walking dead it's like oh this is gonna be the prequel we'll see how the world falls apart it's like nope we're gonna go right to the apocalypse like it just jumps <laughs> and i feel like show me a little bit more of like i don't know the response you know and how mm. it really crumbles but Maybe that's going to be another film in the franchise, but all right, let's see here. Who's going to be next. What do you think, Kyle? What do you think's next? Uh, probably my, probably my plan of the apes. You got it. Kingdom of the Woo! planet of the apes. Number six on the list. To 100, be fair, 171 million domestic. Yeah. That total is about, what I would expect and or that might even even overperformed. I would say I think I was looking at maybe 120, 130 million, maybe 150 tops. So I think it benefited from being early in the uh, summer. Uh, And this series still tends to get a lot of viewers. I've never seen any of the movies in the series so. which is funny because i remember you picked one of these before and i thought you were a fan of this franchise and that's why no you were... not a no yeah. not at all i just know it does like consistent numbers yeah it's so... it's an interesting because i feel like this was a bit of a surprise because 
Yeah, I expected around 120. That was my guess of what it was because it was like, one, I felt like this feels like the MCU to me where it's like, I haven't seen any of these. Like, is there going to be this whole backstory? I don't like really. I sure I get it. Okay. Apes have taken over. But like, I'm sure there's a lot more to it and like characters and it just feels like homework. And I feel like if we look at the numbers, like the last two films, like Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, 2014, 208 million. And then in 2017, War of the Planet of the Apes, 146 million. It's like it was going down down so i'm like okay mm. is this one gonna like 120 but no this one did about on par of the first one in this reboot franchise 176 rise of the Planet of the apes back in the day um so yeah I, it it did well and i think i was also surprised because this was right around in may when everyone was freaking out about the box office apocalypse with with fall guy and furiosa mm. and if and garfield like if you look back at our top 10 you know chart or whatever this is like the only may film that's made it up to like this point mm-hmm. everything else has been like much lower because yeah like you know oh garfield 91 fall guy 92 it's like it's not getting there and this one did this one connected i think this one definitely overperformed for you yeah that's <laughs> fine with me yeah i knew it was a solid contender so i'm glad I got a little something out of it. All right. Our next one on the list we're talking about isn't mine. It's number five. It's Bad Boys Ride or Die. Mm. This one, this was nine on my initial list thinking, okay, maybe 100 million, but whoa, was I wrong? What's that number there? 193? Is that it, John? Yep. 200 yes. million. Wow. Like. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, it didn't do as well as um the last one in the franchise 206 million but it's pretty close it's still there yeah yeah so it's still connecting with the audiences but man i should i should have went with that um but oh well um all right so let's see here you guys have two on the board i have just one only four films left to talk about Mm-mm. i got i got two in this then hmm okay <laughs> all right um we're going to talk about number four on the list, Twisters, 267. All right. I think this was Solid. a big question mark of the summer. I think yeah. this one was a risk, and that's why it was like my last um, pick of my mm. three. It was it was came out in Barbenheimer weekend, you know, uh, 30 years since the last one. It's like, okay, where's this going? I knew it. I knew it wasn't going to be Top Gun Maverick, but I'm like, hey, 30 years ago, this first one made 240 million it's like if that can do it in in the 90s like can we do it you know can we get to you know over 200 this time around and it did 267 Mm -hmm. so it did better uh this time around with you know no sequel characters kind of a reboot not really connected at all with the first film really um it was good you know good win for glenn powell He's probably the biggest name of the cast, and even then, he's not at that huge level well, yet. Like he's working yeah, his way I mean, up, but th- like this he's not. This summer was a this summer was a big, yeah. I think, jumping this, off this point This helped, yeah. like this got him yeah. started. But like, who knows if this came out, you know, like like next year or something, you know, like ooh, like this could have been, mm. or maybe this like the sequel. Um, I don't even know what the title would be <laughs> like. I don't know how many, you can just add another S to Twisters, but yeah. like, then maybe it'll be even bigger, but I don't know, it, I think we, we talked about it on the pod, I think we, we enjoyed it, we had, a, we had a good time with it, it was definitely a summer blockbuster, you know, the goofy mm-hmm. just, you know, grab popcorn and soda and just, just watch tornadoes just rip the crap out of the, yeah, whatever lands it's going through and one tornado becomes a fire tornado and it's just like whoa you know <laughs> uh, but what's what's annoying to me again it could have made more twisters was number three at the box office one weekend and it was the same weekend it went on to vod it was making over 15 million in the theaters there mm-hmm. was calls for this movie to go back into 4dx then the premium screens <laughs> Like people like 
the next film, the next weekend it came out, this probably hurt it a little bit, Deadpool and Wolverine took the IMAX screens from Twisters. There were people wanting, we want Twisters back in IMAX. We want it in 4DX. But no, it's on VOD. It's like, let the film cook. Let this yeah. thing build. Let the storm grow. But no, let's let's put it out. Let's put it out. Get it on VOD. It's just Well, as far as our box office draft goes, yeah, flame that, you know. You left money on the table. Extinguish that flame. <laughs> extinguish that flame. Oh. Give us the rest of the money. D Bridger 2000 in the chat had had a good one with Twister 3, but then Giromatic added to it. You take the Twisters. Instead of the E, it's a backwards three. Nice work, John. Yeah. I like that little brainstorm you and D Bridger got <laughs> yeah. going on in the uh, <laughs> in the in the chat. But uh yeah, so here we go. Just three left. We all have a film in the top three. Uh, I guess, I mean, just looking at the board, I have the 4th and 11th pick uh, so far. Uh, Kyle has 6 and 14. John has 7 and 27. (laughs) No. no. (laughs) It's least the amount of money wins, right? We're playing golf. I don't know about that. I don't know. It's international. International. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Yes. Thank goodness. So we all have one film in the top three. Now start us off. All right, number three, Despicable Me 4. $360 million. Mm. This was my first pick, second overall, but it was number one on my list. Um, Thinking, you know, it would do over 320, and it definitely did. It had the holiday weekend, and while the Minions franchise is a bit better than Despicable Me franchise, this one did do better than Despicable Me 1, Despicable Me 3, so this was a, a good one to have. I just needed a little more help from the Gentle Minions. I don't know where they were this uh, yeah, time around. No. If I, I had the Gentle Minions, this thing could have hit 400. But <laughs> How many uh, Minions, Despicable Me movies are there? Seven? Well, there's there's definitely this, four Despicable Me's. Yes. I believe there's at least three Minions movies. So there's seven there's in this a, whole at universe? At least, and then there's probably... Yeah, Video games and short films and um, obviously a theme park, whatever. And yeah, I was like, gonna say I'm sure there's, there's like a, a theme park peacock situation. TV show where the minions run around. I'm sure there's like a lot of yeah merchandise. And this thing is definitely Money. big, huge, yeah, huge. But um, yeah, I mean, Amy was hoping for a little bit more. Um, you know, I mean, Despicable Me too made about this much, but 368 million minions, like I said, does even better. Like. I think I just I wanted a little bit more from it, and we will see. It was really about one animated film this summer, um, which we'll definitely talk about in a bit. But I think that maybe ate its lunch a little bit as well, mm-hmm. which is crazy to say for a film that made three hundred sixty million domestic. Like, mm-hmm. so there you go. So I'm officially out with uh, seven hundred nineteen million five hundred fifteen thousand eight hundred thirty two dollars total. John, let's see. You have, with your two picks so far, you have 154 million. <laughs> Don't even cry. Kyle, oh, no. you have 238 million. So, okay. Kyle, you have to have 481 million just, I mean, to beat me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and let's see, John, you need to have Deadpool and Wolverine needs to hit over 565 million just to beat me. <sighs> That's a lot of money. <laughs> That is a lot of money. Yeah. Um, About maybe f- five, ten years ago, it could do that. Good. It could. Good news, John. It did. It did. It- oh! <laughs> Number two on the list, $627 million <laughs> for Deadpool and Wolverine. This was number two on my original list. Number two of the summer. John, this is your number one pick. The draft's number one pick. Talk about it. There you go. I bought 4,000 tickets. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I, I, this is one franchise. I'm not a superhero person at all, but this is one franchise that I always enjoy. I think the, the, the crude ho- humor does well, and I, I, it's completely different than the boys, but it's like that same kind of thing where it's like you have like superheroes, and then it's like twisted into something kind of different, and this is twisted into something different but good, whereas the boys is kind of twisted into something different but bad. But 
Um, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was a good movie. Um, I I think it did well, and I'm I'm happy to see that it it you know the numbers are saying it's doing well. So, well, I think the most surprising thing about this is a rated R movie making mm. this kind of cash. Um, so that's the whole thing about it. Um, I wonder when the Ryan Reynolds shtick gets old. Cause I mean, we're like, I think outside of Deadpool it's done. Yeah. It's yeah. old. And I yeah. think like, so soon people will will grow oh my i'm gonna get in trouble grow up a bit and this will be old <laughs> oh, and like oh it's just i i i think like I, it I mean, was just too it was i think just outside too of this many... character it doesn't work and yeah I, there's just yeah. too many fourth wall breaks and we're making the same type of joke don't get me wrong i like the movie yeah. i i did enjoy the movie but it got to be like you're making fun of the thing you're, you know, you're doing the thing that you're making fun of. But that's, that's why right. it's funny. You know what I mean? Like, but I when you do it again and again and again, it's like you're just yeah. doing the thing. But you know, they followed up on some like stuff they set up in other and other uh, of the Deadpool ones. Like they made a joke about In Sync. Like they should have booked In Sync, and then of course there was this big yeah. you know, dance number. So yeah, they're yeah. kind of doing a little bit on that. But I, I will I, say I, I didn't see the film, but I saw that clip go around like crazy on Twitter. I thought that was a little overrated. <laughs> like, oh like, yeah, feels, oh, oh Dave, Dave's was, gonna but, get us canceled. Yeah, I feel like I mean John's agreeing me with it. Like it feels like such like low hanging fruit for bye bye bye. It's like it, it was funny it, for like thirty seconds. Then yeah. it was like all right, yeah, we get it. Yeah, it's like, oh, you're you're doing this like crazy like action scene to a fun pop song. We've never seen that before in any Marvel movie or anything. And it's like, <laughs> okay, like, you know, maybe do some like reach back in the back catalog a little bit further uh for um you know, some a little more of a B side of an NSYNC song to do it to, or you know, like a one that maybe we don't know as well. But made 627 million that's uh, like what do i know um who are we to judge <laughs> yeah it, it as you mentioned um the whole r rating of it all that you know, of course you know always worries you know any of us when we were doing the draft but it didn't matter here it's the biggest r-rated film of all time domestic and worldwide it's also number 13 on the domestic all-time chart that includes all rated films 13 just under last year's barbie uh domestically wow and, you know, I, I was a little worried a little bit with Marvel, cause, like the downward trend of it all. Like last summer, we really saw it. Sure. Guardians 3, the last one in a, in a franchise, a lot of people like 389 million. But then that was like the lowest start for any of those May tentpole Marvel movies that Disney's uh. had. And then like Ant-Man 3, 214, last Marvel film that even came out at all was the Marvels, which... Make all your jokes you want. The first one made a billion do- bi- over a billion worldwide. This one domestically made eighty four million. Eighty four million. I... So like, it's just like it just seemed like it seemed a little bit off with all the Disney Plus shows and what are we doing with Jonathan Majors' character? Like it just felt like we were just like lost. Like we didn't know what we were doing and maybe the the irreverence and just like the whole like meta ness really helped. I this, get what you're I saying, but when I when I think of Wolverine Deadpool, I don't think of that whole Marvel and the whole expanded universe and all that. I think of the previous other two movies, and we get a little bit more, obviously, with Wolverine in this one, kind of like expanding on that. But it, to me, it doesn't scream the the oh, I gotta go watch four thousand movies to catch up mm-hmm. like the other ones do. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't it doesn't have that baggage to me. So I that's I, that's I, true. That is true. And but like even like if you look at like Deadpool, I mean. As we were talking about, like, oh, the Ryan Reynolds stick is it getting old? Like Deadpool, I mean, was before this film trending a bit down. The the first one, three hundred sixty three million. The second one, three hundred eighteen million. So I'm like, okay, this one will get three three hundred million. You know, three fifty somewhere in there. But to do like double mm. six hundred twenty seven, like that's a pretty big jump. And I definitely think having Wolverine, kind yeah. of the X Men mm-hmm. franchise yeah. of it all this MCU of it all, like all this stuff combining into one 
mega thing i think really helped it wolverine's a really popular character definitely i I think it definitely helped and like even just in the naming not naming this deadpool 3 but naming a deadpool and wolverine i think actually really helped it and Mm -hmm. i haven't seen many of these marvel marvel films i did see wolverine when it came out so like you know what i mean like it's definitely one of the few that i have seen and have an interest in so it was nice to I mean, it was nice to see them. Kind of people love Hugh Jackman. E-, e DM in the chat saying, "Do you guys hear that they're playing an Oscar campaign for supporting actor for Hugh Jackman?" I mean, they can try. Like, Interesting. You know? yeah, supporting and not main. Yeah, Deadpool main. His name's first. Yeah, well, that's good. <laughs> uh, but no. Um, I mean, if he couldn't get it for Logan. I don't know if he's, he's mm. getting it for yeah. this. Robert Downey Jr. not getting it for Iron Man for, you know, Endgame. Like, I don't, again, I don't think it's happening for this. But they they can try. They can try. Um, all right. So clearly I'm out. But John, with his uh, over 600 million, really put things into another level here. Mm-hmm. So Kyle does have the number one film. But does yeah. he have enough? To beat John. I think we know the answer. 652 million for Inside Out 2. Is that enough? We know the answer, I thought. <laughs> I thought about <laughs> I thought I did better out. than that. <laughs> yes. I think I did. Yes, yes. it is. Yes, it yes. is enough. We'll get to totals in a minute, but let's talk about Inside Out 2. This was number three on my original list. It was the fourth film picked overall. Kyle, your second pick. You went with Furiosa over this one first. Mm -hmm. But you went back to back. You went with Inside Out 2. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to be like, you knew Mm -hmm. it all along. But be honest with me tonight. Be honest with me. Okay? Because I'll go through the stats of why the Mm -hmm. pros and cons of it all. Yes, this film did extremely well. Mm -hmm. But there was no way you could have predicted it did this well. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's no, I I didn't, I didn't think it would do better than Deadpool and Wolverine. I, I, if I had been the first person, I would have chosen Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, but this probably would have been my, I don't know. No, because I chose it for it. I don't know. I, I don't know. I thought it could do well. Um, I thought it was the best animated movie. Let me say that. Mm. I didn't think, I think this is better than Despicable Me in my mind. Because I know Pixar has kind of been down, but there's something about Inside Out that uh, was really nostalgic for people. And I just, at the time when this movie was coming out, I work with a lot of kids and even kids that I wouldn't anticipate watching this or like too cool for school kind of thing. They were talking about this movie and talking about going to see this movie. So I knew there was something to it and I knew that they would get maybe parents, maybe people in my generation that had saw when they were younger. So um, I thought it would do well, but I didn't think it would do the top movie of the summer well yeah i did not think that. i thought 300 yeah mm-hmm. you know because there was yeah. a lot against it and we'll go through it but you know it was sandwiched in between two animated movies including despicable me four i know you said like oh you thought it would do better but i mean if you look at it, it's like the original inside out made 356 million mm-hmm. and like you know despicable me four this year made 360 million so it's like all right they're on par kind of thing Mm -hmm. with the amount of and there's been so many other things in the franchise to build the other one up it's been about 10 years since the last inside out it's been a while Mm -hmm. and it's a very different world at the box office i mean the pandemic really messed with pixar elemental last year again it's not ip i mean it's not like a franchise was the worst opening for pixar in over 30 years but thanks to strong legs it made 154 million Okay. The year before, Lightyear, based on a very popular IP, 118 million. So, like, Pixar was, like, in this, like, low 100 range. And it's like, yeah, I don't think it's going to do that bad. But, you know, 300? Okay, that would be that'd be nice. But to do 652 to be the biggest Pixar movie of all time. Bigger than Toy Story 4. Bigger than Finding Dory. 
bigger than The Incredibles 2, which was 608 million. Like in just 11 days, it it outgrossed the original's total. Mm. Like this was ginormous. Like in one weekend, it made more than the Elemental's entire run. Like so it just really clicked. And as you said, maybe it was like something with the timing. Like I just am not tapped in with, you know, with kids of this, of this, you know, time frame to know that like how much toy story meant to me, I guess inside out means so much to them mm. that like now they are watching this and, um, you know, it's, it's the biggest all time domestic and worldwide film rated G or PG 11th domestic all time just ahead of barbie just under jurassic world by about a million wow. and it's the eighth worldwide of all time film behind wow. or ahead of jurassic world and just under spider-man no way home so it's in the top 10 worldwide of all time like so this one was a huge one crazy you got it for you know number number four it definitely like, if if you didn't take it at four i was gonna be, you know pick next at five i would have gone with this because again, mm-hmm. it would have been okay. Like, you know, okay, I'm gonna get 250. I'm gonna get 300. You know, maybe yeah. if I'm lucky. But this one was crazy. And what's wild is like, despite all that, there's a bit of controversy with the film for the employees because there was so, there was many layoffs at Pixar. And one of these things that came out in this article about like you know how the film was made and, and, and like the long hours and everything going on, mm. which you can check out the article. It said like, due to the profit sharing model at Disney Pixar, a movie has to cross 600 million to be considered profitable for Pixar. And it's not really seen as a true hit until it's, it hits that coveted 1 billion mark. So it's what? like, one of those that's things. insane. It's like, guys, maybe you're not doing this cost analysis, right? Yeah. Because there shouldn't be this a billion kind of dollar. Yeah. To be considered a hit. That sounds like Hollywood accounting to me. That's insane. Yeah. Somebody's yeah. making the money. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. And but speaking of money, let's do the grand totals here. Again, domestically, I am number three with 719 million. Followed wow. with John 78 or 781 million. And then Kyle, first place, 891 million. Just for fun, let's add in worldwide. Let's show it. It's the same. Kyle, uh, you have 2.2 billion, John oh. 1.6 billion, and I'm close behind John 1.5 billion. You know, it's John. Tough. If John didn't pick that stinker of Borderlands, yeah. I think he's. I would have had it if I had picked something yeah. else. If you pick something, pick something I go else. World of Warcraft again, dang it! <laughs> <laughs> What's wild is, like, if you picked, it, we talked about it during our show, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Sure, it came out mm-hmm. in September. So it's one of those ones where it's like, uh, you're taking a risk. It's like mm-hmm. it chapter two because it's like you only have like two weeks of money to make here mm-hmm. just with the timing of it. Mm-hmm. So we close it at the first day of fall. At that moment, it made 226 million. Oh man. Oh, my so it would have been on our list number five. Wow. What on our hell? list. So that could have been something like if i had chosen that instead of garfield like ooh, this yeah. is a whole other game yeah. here because yeah. as you could see in that you know the top four films i i had two of them like you know so it's just mm, like yeah. um but th- what's fun is we weren't competing against ourselves here not you know we were also competing against ai google's chat pot gemini also got to make three picks now the asterisk is th- Gemini gets to pick against all the films. It mm-hmm. was like everything is on the table for Gemini. So, yeah, this is a pretty good lineup. But Gemini picked Despicable Me 4, Oops, sorry. <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine, and A Quiet Place Day 1. Those were Gemini's picks. So two of John's film, one of mine, and Gemini ended up crushing us. $1.1 in domestic totals for Gemini. And it's interesting. Again, didn't pick one of Kyle's films, yep. but still managed to make one point one billion and beat us. Yep. Yeah, that's yes. crazy. But um, you know what? I'm still gonna say it. I, I picked third and I won, which well, is a feat. It's, all right. It, it's always funny because he's always like, "Oh, if I only had picked two, <laughs> I would have been able to win." Because I'm always third, and it's just like, "Well, you got your win. You got yes, your win." I did. 
Let's look at the. I want to look at the the full board if we can, John, for a second, because I think it's interesting to note. Um, you know, Kyle, I'll give you that. You have the win. You did really well with a with a third uh, pick overall. I think I had like one of the best steals though with Twisters for it to be number four on the list, or and I picked it eighth, second mm-hmm. to last in the draft, and it's in the top four over two hundred sixty seven million dollars. Mm-hmm. But then I you know if we're looking at the best picks, I think we also have to look at the worst pick. I know okay, Borderlands is an easy one, John, to pick on. You know, yeah. you picked it number seven. It was number twenty seven on the draft, but I'd say like. It's close though between like Furiosa. It's sure it's fourteen on the list, but it was the you know the third overall pick. So I think like numbers mm. wise, like those two, it's tricky. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean but, Deadpool Wolverine was still making about four million in the last weekend uh, that we were counting, and I think it was still in like the top five this weekend. So that's wild. Yeah. But, I think normally we are pretty good about getting the top picks i think this is our yeah. one of our worst yeah, years definitely. and i think it's getting harder to figure out what's happening at the box office yeah. normally curious. we would show up like the normally we show like 11 and we would like miss like two because yeah. we would have like the nine this one was tougher yeah. uh, i'm curious is this closer or not as close as previous years as far as our spread for totals um I think this is the most furthest apart we've ever yeah, had. Yeah, really I think it's pretty furthest apart. I feel like there's been years, like, there was a year where it's, like, literally, like, you beat me by, like, a few million, John. It was, like, mm. really close, and I got, like, second to you by, like, a, a, like a hair. It was yeah, really... Okay. So, um, yeah, I it's interesting, though, because, like, I'm starting to wonder if there's, like, a curse in the fan poll, because, like, we do the fan poll, like, you know, on social media, like, mm. as soon as, you know, in April when they come out. Last year, I got zero votes. No votes for me last year. Mm-hmm. I won the draft last year. Mm-hmm. This year, I was leading the polls. I was the top pick. I had the best team. Kyle barely got any votes. Mm-hmm. He wins the draft. Yeah. So I guess we learned people don't know anything. They don't. <laughs> Let's get rid of voting. <laughs> Stop the count. It, this is it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But... Oh, all right it was a fun one congratulations kyle it's always fun uh to do this and we'll definitely do it again next summer but yeah i mean john at least he didn't pick like the horizon part two movie or something and then have it been pulled from the theater yeah, so. yeah all right part two i was gonna say horizon did better than borderlands but part two yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh i mean again I, i'm still surprised about that Coraline 15th anniversary movie. yeah that's <laughs> like, crazy uh, but anyways um it's hard to believe but we're not done yet we're not done yet <laughs> um we got some quick checks to talk about tonight oh, not only did i not no. prepare it i prepared the wrong song <laughs> oh no it's uh, okay if it's not ready it fix it in nope. post All i right. got it right here here we go yes. yeah boy all right, all right. You're fired from Pierpoint, John. Um, <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> You're free. A twenty million dollars severance package for you. Oh, please. <laughs> All right. More than that Borderlands pick. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Eric made more oh. money in severance. Than- <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. We're gonna talk about industry season three. This was a quick check, but after what happened in last night's finale, it might be a bit of a elongated quick check, but we'll do our best to to cover season three so yes there will be spoilers from the season from the finale last night this is i'm going to start us off because this is my uh quick check what i'm going to start with and i will say unlike the other hbo sunday series that came just before this i think this one packed so much into every single episode it really made the season so fast-paced so enjoyable with so much to discuss while dragon was like slow going around and like is this even a season of television this one was just like the finale alone felt like a series finale Mm -hmm. and maybe it was written as one but like this season threw everything the entire notebook and left nothing which again you know it's a double-edged sword because it's like yeah you got all your best stuff here it comes 
like what do you got what do you got left what, yeah. what's, what's season yeah. four you know because it's definitely going to be a reset but man there you had episodes influenced kind of by like uncut gems um this i think the penultimate one was very margin call you had all these different influences that everything was 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 rolling along I think the best way to kind of sum it up is maybe go by character by character with how things ended. We could talk about it, you know, a little bit on each one. We could start off with Harper, who, after betraying Yasmin with with a list that she got from Pierpoint, which results in Yasmin's firing, uh, tries to pretty much short Pierpoint. And after her partner doesn't want to go through with it, seemingly is now jumping ship, going to New York City to work on something where, quote, it isn't illegal unless we get caught. So that doesn't sound good. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't get how this character is continuously failing <laughs> upwards. The whole show, all she does is fail upwards. I don't get it. Well, because <sighs> she's mixed in with some characters that do want to do this type of activity. And, and she's just finding those people and they're willing to play the game. Oh, and they... She's not getting in trouble. There's no penalties for her. Every time she does something I wrong, know. she gets a uh, uh, leg know. up. I know. Oh. I know. So frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, I mean, with how it ends, you think uh, maybe Jesse Bloom is back in the picture. Yeah, they threw this, that in at the end there. Yeah, yeah. this Otto Mostyn guy is very powerful. That she's gonna and but. We know, and I mean, at pretty much every character that's in the show, they are not okay with the status quo, which is why when we talk about Yasmin, she's not okay with Robert. Harper is not okay to just sit there with her partner and, hey, everything's fine. Everything's cool together. Like, yeah, I'm going to sit in my little like, Subaru, have yeah. the kids kicking us in the back while you're doing scratch-offs. It's like, I need a better yeah. life than that. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. So, like... Harper is not okay with just being like a partner like that. She she's a rebel and like she always has been, and so I think I did that partnership is gonna just blow up and that you know the what's her name the the blonde haired woman that she's partnered with is gonna be, feel awful mm-hmm. that she ever partnered with Harper, but yeah, and. I- I think she's skipping town or I don't know what she's doing. I mean, if she just takes off and goes to New York, it's all these characters are in such different places. I don't know what season four looks like. Mm. Um, But, you know, meanwhile, I'm jumping around with characters. But Richie, like he quit his job to work with Harper. Mm. But it was all kind of like a way to like humiliate him because they Mm. bring on Sweet Pea and other people instead on to the, the workforce here. But he doesn't need really any more turmoil stress humiliation because after failing to pay up his wife is shot dead (laughs) like yeah wild like yeah this was one of those things where it's like it feels like it's coming but it's like nah this show won't go that way like that's too out there oh it went there it's just like well i i I didn't think i thought he was gonna end up dead yeah i I, I thought yeah, he well, was gonna be the one to go because he doesn't get repaid that way though yeah i guess that's true (laughs) yeah that's true. But I, I really did think it was going to be him that was dead. I even said it out loud to myself. I'm like, oh, yeah. he's going to die. His his Uncut Gems episode where he pretty much gets it all back and then immediately spends it all. It's oh, just like, boy. oh, my God, dude. Yeah. Like, get it together. Oh, yeah. man. But Well, he's got a, he said he's got a sickness. He clearly yeah. does. Definitely does. And again, what a way for him to have a season four here uh now is you know in his smaller flat single dad yeah without a job like this is not not a good spot Mm -hmm. yeah meanwhile rob uh his heart was metaphorically i guess destroyed uh (laughs) after uh heading off with yasmin and growing closer with her only for a a little stop at henry's uncle's house leads yasmin and henry to get engaged yeah but this was moments after Mm -hmm. rob and yasmin have sex Mm -hmm. and they make it clear there was no protection Mm -hmm. so 
season four baby <laughs> like i think it's very clear like there's yeah. not in there just to like have it just like oh like a moment like they're setting something up here i think where yeah. robert yeah. is definitely gonna be the father yeah i mean maybe i mean it also goes to show like in that moment she says i love you they both say yeah. i love you they've had struggled with companionship this emotion they've got this lingering thing throughout the seasons and she said she could never love anybody and and even henry and yasmin joke about it like i don't believe you that you love me they're just with each yeah. other for whatever they, they give each other in outside of love but um yeah it was just never gonna work with robert and yasmin and yeah. but they had, I mean, that was a that was a good moment for them. Mm. But I like it was a heartfelt moment. They had this cutaway to all the moments that they've had before. They've had some weird moments, yeah. but it was it was still it was like it was heartfelt. a shock to good. Robert and a shock to the audience yeah. as well as how how they yeah. they cut it together. And there's a moment at the end though, like when Robert's driving away, smiling because they cut to a quote Yasmin says where it's like, you "Now I'm good at making people fall in love with me, but I've never been in love." Mm -hmm. So he smiles knowing. Yeah, this this marriage is a sham. Like, yeah. maybe you know, in his well, weird way, I still got a chance. Like, you know, I, I also <laughs> think that she did that because of uh, Henry's uncle saying that you know yeah. they they yeah. protect family oh, and and she yeah. wants that he wants cover. that she, yeah she wants yeah. that money she wants the protection because Rob's not gonna be able to do it for him like yeah. it's not gonna happen and yeah I mean there's definitely. Definitely some father issues. I mean, it was like, we, not only did we find out that she um, did not help her father from drowning in the ocean, but like, the, I'm pretty sure the ring that Henry uses for this proposal mm -hmm. is the ring she takes off her father's corpse. Yep. So it's like now she kind of has yeah. that ring. It's like, I am now like her father. Like, it's like, it's like this kind of mm -hmm. like connection. And we see it a little bit when she hires the person that her father was with on the boat and then immediately fires after yeah. like feeling any sort of like sympathy from from her just like we had eric and kenny in the like i think the first episode where Ke kenny is fired for showing any kind of sympathy uh for eric you know dealing with aa and stuff like that it's mm -hmm. kind of like this full circle moment of of these characters and yeah we can we can talk about Eric real quick to finish things off. Where it's like, yeah, he gets a twenty million dollars severance package after saving Pierpoint from disaster, and also kind of messing with his coworker's memory to pin a mistake on him. So I guess like no more Pierpoint for the show because Eric's gone from it. None of our other cast members work there anymore. Mm -hmm. He said yeah. goodbye to Harper. It's like, is he in the show anymore? Like I don't understand. Like what He's, season four is like yeah. everyone is in every different way like every story like this felt like a series finale maybe they didn't know it was ending because it's like everything kind of closed up a little bit here like this could be the end for a lot of people mm -hmm. so yeah um but eric is like a cockroach he just always mm -hmm. is around somewhere and he's good at selling things yeah. and people like that so and it's not about the money for him. He's because he says to Harper, it's not enough. It's not enough. He's at $20 million. It's not enough. He says to Harper yeah. and Harper and him have like a, a thing. I will say I to think save a like a 150, 150 year like company of, at this level. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if 20 million is enough for like yeah. what he did to save that company. But yeah, I understand mm -hmm. what you mean. But I mean, he effectively murdered his friend. Yeah. Yeah, by I doing mean, it. Yeah, because we, I assume he committed suicide. Yeah? yeah, yeah, or he just like he lost kind of the will to live, just yeah. whether may he let the yeah. the illness take over. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, so so yeah, and I, there is something between Eric and Harper, even though Eric despises Harper, he was willing to write something in Fortune, and I think he he. There is something in Harper that he feels like he helped build, and yeah. I think it is their form of the closest thing that they can have to love, yeah. which is what they were going with Robert and Yasmin, and it, so oh. I think that's what they were going for with that. They kind of talked a bit about um, 
how Eric was working there young and, and doing all that stuff. And I wonder if he sees a little bit of himself in her and, you yeah. know, trying mm-hmm. to fight up through the ranks and, and do what he yeah. needs to do to, to, to thrive. So, yeah. 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 And I just think like overall this, this season was so much fun. Definitely my favorite of the three. It just moved at such a quick pace and they really threw everything mm-hmm. at the wall. Some things like don't fully add up when you like stop and think about it. I mean, just like there's so many different like little things when you're watching an episode, it's like, really? And then it's like, for instance, like the night of the Pier Point 150th party, like the stock is crashing bad. It's not doing well. Yet Richie's team, you know, Sweet Pea, all of them, they're just like joking around, having fun in the office. It's like they wouldn't have like the stock on their phone. Like even I have stocks on my phone mm-hmm. that I'll look yeah. at periodically. Like this is your company. This is your job. Like you wouldn't get mm-hmm. a news alert that you're being like, <laughs> like, it's just, everyone's like, Woo! like, it's just mm. like, you might not have a job come an hour from now. Like, um, but so stuff like that, but overall, a lot of fun. I think we all uh, enjoyed the season. Oh, yeah. I will say I apologize. Cause yeah, we are, we are over. So your next two quick chicks, I, I sucked all the air out of the room. <laughs> what do you got, Kyle? What do you got? I'll be quick with my quick check. So I watched the, uh, series premiere or season premiere, uh, both of the Penguin. Um, I will say I, I enjoyed uh, the premiere. I think Colin Farrell is is just Colin Farrell's performance alone is worth watching this show, um, and it it gives off that gritty like uh, vibe of this guy trying to like come up through the ranks and trying to shift things in his own way. Um, trying to this mob boss who's trying to make his way and he's a despicable character, but there's something that you're almost rooting for him in a way. Um, and I think it's all through his performance. Um, Kristen Milioti's in it and she seems to be really like a really cool character too. Uh, and they seem to be butting heads so uh, I'm excited to see where this show goes. Um, I will say there was a couple of production moments where like it has this gritty vibe and then like it feels like the color correction's off in place. I'm like, hey, what's happening here? But uh, and then there's one character I'm concerned about. It's supposed to be like his this young up and coming sidekick that he kind of blackmails into getting on his side. And it's this young teenage kid and there's something off about the character it seems like too clean cut especially for the way that they meet um and yeah it just seems too clean cut for how the rest of the show and i know what they're trying to get like he's gonna turn this kid into a monster maybe i don't know but um yeah, I, I think I need to see more of that character to really see how they flesh that out. But with all that said, I, I think it could be a really, really good show. And I really did enjoy the premiere. Uh, and I I definitely recommend the premiere for people just to see Colin Far- Farrell. He's so good. Yeah, And after I, what I've heard with uh, the amount of makeup in season one, Colin Farrell's like, I'm not doing this again. It's the meme from I think you should leave. It's like there's yeah. too much crap on me. <laughs> I can't move. Like, yeah. So we'll see if it if it's a one and done or if I get I, this character. I don't remember if he's around in the end of the Batman movie, if mm. he will be in Batman 2 or whatever. But um, mm. yeah, uh, interesting that this is now expanding into um, into Max originals. All right, John, close us off. What do you got? I have What the Car. Uh, if you remember a couple of years ago, maybe I, I did a review of What the Golf, which was a golf game where you did anything but hit a golf ball. Uh, this is a little car obstacle course racing game where you do anything but drive a car. Uh, so it may be things like your wheels are replaced with giraffes and you use them as stilts or you uh, swim through water using the doors as oars of the car or... Um, you have, uh, gorilla arms and you use them to kind of do like a gorilla run or your car is covered in springs and it just bounces around and your, your goal is to get to the end. Um, there's extra bonuses for getting to the end in a certain amount of time. There's extra bonuses for getting certain items along the way. And, um, it's just a, a, a very interesting game. Uh, a lot of fun to play. Always something new. Every level kind of has its own little gimmick. 
um, where, you know, maybe you'll do uh, two or three levels as a, a, a car that got turned into a speedboat, but they all, all the two or three levels have a little bit of a different twist to them as you drive this, this speedboat car through it, or, um, you know, as you have a rocket car, or you have a, um, like a, a, a soccer ball shooter on top, and so you're, you're shooting the ball behind you to push you forward, or all sorts of different things. So it, it's definitely one of those interesting, unique games that keeps you on your toes, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, there's a, a, a ton of content in it. Um, I've been streaming it, and I'm only on world like seven or something. I think they have eight different worlds and a bunch of bonus stuff. They have uh, uh, player-created levels. Uh, they have an under-construction area where they're making new levels from the actual company, so they're, they're going to be expanding it and all that so um definitely worth taking a look into I, I would recommend this i would recommend what the golf as well um there's a, a third one that came out between them called what the bat which is a vr one that i'm eventually gonna play i just haven't gotten the, the chance to set up my vr stuff again to play it but um definitely recommend it i believe you can play it on steam i think this came out on apple game store as well so you may be able to play it on there um i think it actually might have came out first on apple game store so um, it only recently came to PC, so definitely worth checking out. I'll make sure I give Dave um, yeah. the playlist of me playing it in case you just want to chill and definitely. watch it. So, Cool. Sounds fun. Sounds wild. Sounds like a good time. Yeah, the VR one's going to be crazy. Yeah. Um, I feel like what we do in the shadows is just going to yell bat all the time and <laughs> be running around. But all right, that's all we got. Jam Pack Show went a little over, but I mean, it might be a little bit of uh, time before we're back with a new episode so they can tide you over for a little bit. Uh, hoping to meet up sometime in October to discuss, you know, some of the stuff we, you know, to catch up on, maybe some of the other things we're watching and doing, but also a lot of big movies coming out. You know, uh, Megalopolis just came out, Joker 2 just ke- or is going to come out soon, Saturday Night, The Apprentice, there's so many different movies, hearing mixed things on pretty much all of them, so like, mm-hmm. who knows what we end up actually seeing, if we see any at all, but definitely make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so you never miss an episode, so you know exactly what we're doing and when youtube apple Podcasts, spotify the blog do of course twitch twitch.tv slash do redundancy uh we we stream live on both twitch and youtube at the same time uh, we had a, a bunch of different chatters tonight i want to shout out i wish i could i'm typing at the same time as hosting it's it's very complicated i wish i could do more but e dm in the chat and then also um d bridger 2000 also as well so thank you guys for for joining tonight Make sure you're following us on Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok, at Do Redundancy. Got to thank both of you guys for joining me tonight, partaking in this game, doing a little bit later on uh, Monday night tonight. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Thanks, John. Getting the episode up on YouTube, Apple Podcasts. But until next time, I'm David Allen. I'm Jeff And I'm Cobberger. And that's all we got for Do Redundancy. Goodbye, everybody.